to honor me in this manner. And I am grateful to him for that. And I appreciate all of you for being here today and to um, help me celebrate the end of my career in a, in a manner of in the classroom. I, I, I really have had it. <laughs> to the end. Um, not because of children. A lot of times people say, it's because the children are so mad. It's not because of the children. I can do children all day. But it's the stuff that goes with being in the classroom. I know there are many educators out here today that understand exactly what I'm talking about. And from 1987, when I actually started uh, to this point, we're talking about something that's totally different. Back then, going into the classroom seriously meant you were dealing with children and you dealt with the reading, the math, the science, the social studies. We did all of that. I had every subject, every single day, and it was awesome. Had a lot of fun. Had my children with me. But as the years progressed and technology came in place, things didn't go quite the same. So with that being done, the State Department wants data or data. They want numbers. And if your numbers don't look right, you don't look right. And if you don't look right, OK. You have the option of getting it into gear, or you can go home. Well, it's not that my numbers don't look right. They still want me. And I am appreciative to that, but it's so much more to deal with. <clears throat> I'm tired, and I think it's time for me to call it. So I, I'm doing it now while I have the knowledge that I know that I'm calling it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't want anybody to have to tell me, it's okay, you can go home. I, I, I can do this, I can do this. But I appreciate all of you for being here. I'm going to say what I have written, but I just want to look at my children. Look at my babies over there. <laughs> also, they're so grown and just doing their own thing. And this, each one is just something just different. But when it comes to my boys, I'm very passionate about my boys. Because girls, you know, they're going to be OK. But it's something about boys in Hope County and where we are. In, in our Skirlock community, they have a more difficult time, our boys. So even though Chris and Tell were not in the Skirlock community, it's still OK because I still kept up with them. And I wanted to make sure that they would always grow up, develop, and to become who they actually are today. Uh, one of my students that we had in Skirlock. His parent was his example. And I kept telling this young man, I said, please stop watching your dad because dad would be home two months and gone for six. Read between the lines. Home for another month and gone for a year. That was a pattern that he watched in that household every since he had been born, more than likely. So he ended up in the same place eventually. Matter of fact, not just him, but he and his brother ended up in the same place. And the brother got a chance to come home and, and not have to go there, but this one child is still there. But one day, I was in my classroom, because I, I tend to stay until they run me out. The phone rang. And when I picked up the phone, it was someone from the Department of Corrections and saying, I need to speak with Ms. Teresa Kemmer. This is she. Well, I have a person here in the 
prison. And I was talking with him and telling him about changing his lifestyle and that kind of thing. And he said, well, there's one person that I know of who helped me when I was in the fifth grade. And she said, somebody helped you in the fifth grade? He said, yes, my teacher. He said, you can call her anytime and ask her. Just tell, all you gotta do is tell her my name and she automatically knows who I am and will speak well of me. And when she said that, I said, oh, I already know who you're talking about. She said, ma'am? I said, yeah, I know who you're talking about. That's my boy. And she said, oh my God, are you for real? I said, yes. Before she said anything, I had told her, told her his name, told her about the mark that he has on his face and how he got it. And she was stunned for a moment. She said, but it's been 15 years. I said, I don't care, I know my babies. I know my children. She was overwhelmed, but to this day, any of my children, they know they need me, call me. I'll do the very best job that I can to see about them, to support them in whatever they're trying to do. As long as it's right. <laughs> and I don't have a problem with that. And more recently, I don't know how many years this has been, Chris, how long have you been there, babe? <coughs> 10 years. Oh when Chris right. got married, Chris called me on the phone. He said, hey, what's up? <laughs> like, I'm all right. What's wrong with you? Were you all right? Yes, ma'am. I'm good. I don't understand. Understand what, Chris? What's going on? I don't understand why you haven't been calling me lately. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I'm sorry. You know, I'm busy. School, school, school. He said, yeah, but I got something I want to tell you. Oh, Lord. Chris, what happened? No, it's not like that, Miss Kim. He said, never mind. I'm coming to your house. I said, okay. When you come, so I'll be here, you know. And he told me what day or whatever. So that particular day came, and Chris came to my house. And I said, what's going on, sweetie? He's like, I just wanted to do this. And he handed me his wedding invitation. He said, I couldn't mail it. I had to put it in your hand. <laughs> and he said, and I want you there. And what did I tell you? I'm coming. And I will be there for you, with you. I said, I hope I'll have somebody with me. That didn't happen because somebody had to go out of town and play. <laughs> so I went by myself and I was able to witness my baby getting married that day. All right. Again, all of my children are very special to me and I appreciate you for taking your time out to respond, first of all, to Desmond and uh, let him know that you were coming. But I don't, let me read this to you. Now I started, like I said, back in 1987 as student teaching uh, Mrs. Diane Townsend. So um, I was at J.W. Turlington, Emma Mills, <laughs> one of the best principals around at that time. So after leaving J.W. Turlington, I remember driving onto Skurlock's campus not really knowing what to expect. I didn't think I knew anyone except my friends, James Gates, Corliss McFadder, and Brenda Pass. Now these are the teachers that I had encouraged to leave their job. I'm told, I don't know what y'all doing here, leave. And I had them to come with me to Hope County Schools. and We were gonna do some stuff over there, Hope County. Now I'm new. Now they've been working a little bit longer than I had, and I'm just thinking I can move, be a moving, a shaking, all of that good stuff. 
So we went in and we were welcomed on that campus. And I don't know about what happened with them on that side, but I was in a different area. I was in a new wing. And I received a tour of the school at that time. And because we had to leave Turlington because of, I think it was growing asbestos and all of this good stuff that was going on, they told us that we would be able to go to any elementary, well, any elementary school that we chose to go to. I didn't know anything at all about Scurlock. None. I think I had seen it a few times, but didn't really understand what it was. I mean, I knew it was a school, but that was it because it was on the eastern uh, side of town. And of course, I didn't live down there, so I didn't know what was happening. Boy, I found her. So I got to Scurlock, and I was able to choose my own room. So that's a plus. We own something here. Let's choose my own classroom. Walk down the hall, look at all the stuff, and I thought about it. If I get the in classroom, that means I hear all the people coming in and out from the door. I don't want to hear that. If I choose a classroom near the bathroom, then I have to hear the commodes flushing all day. I don't want to hear that. And if I'm on the back side, I can't be nosy and see what's going on. So I don't want that. So I actually chose the room near the end, but on the highway. It was room 25 back then. Room 25, but along the way they changed it to room 20. And that was in the new wing, and the only thing that had done in that wing was resource, because it was a K-4 school. I should have run then, I guess, to middle school, so that way I would have had my fifth and sixth grade under, under wraps, and I wouldn't have to deal with little people. But um, I went on and decided to go to the elementary school, and in that room, it was, I guess, coarse, maybe. So the room was immaculate. It was clean, and it looked better than the other ones because that particular room was in blue, like a powder blue, and the other classroom had something pinkish looking, and I'm like, ugh, I didn't want that. So I chose that particular room, and for the next 28 and a half years, I've been in that same classroom. <laughs> So that's my home. The only thing that's missing is my pillow and a blanket. Well, I actually have a blanket, so all I need is a pillow. But in that room, I did everything that I wanted to do, teaching my children, doing what I considered was an inspiration not only to them, but to myself. Because if I didn't like it or enjoy it, then I knew they weren't going to enjoy it. Um, but obviously, it was for me. So, continue. I obviously enjoyed my tenure and continue to continue that since I've been there since 1989. I never claimed that teaching or the concept of it was easy. But with prayer, family support, great administrations along the way, and colleagues whom I've encountered and deem as friends now. Francis, Mary Beth, <laughs> Pugh, Cole as always, and Young. Where did Cole go? <laughs> we were all in the hallway. We didn't have, <laughs> we didn't have our intercom system or telephones We in the way back. So we use our own telephone to contact each other. Now you would think, these are adults. All of these adults. But I guarantee you, we could step outside our door and call any one of us that we needed to. Now Coleman was on the opposite end of where Paps and I were. It didn't matter. All we had to do was step outside in the hallway and call me! Yeah! <laughs> that was our intercom system. Francis was across the hall, so it was easy to just open the door. Hey, what's up? What Mr. Miles want for lunch? Because if he want fried chicken, that's what we want. <laughs> so it was real easy. And now, my partner across the hall is Pew. And Pew was getting ready to leave me and go back to 
Atlanta. But, Pew, how do I call meetings? Fifth grade? Let's go. So, we have a meeting in the hallway. It doesn't matter how often, but we do. We have our meetings in the hallway. Uh, but it's, it's awesome. And believe it or not, it's, it's time. It's time for me to pass the torch. Why? Now, again, not so much because of my age, because if you think about my age, I am actually too young. Can't draw any Social Security. I have to wait another 10 years <laughs> for that. So it'll only be retirement and my daddy. Thank God for my daddy. Yeah, give it up for my daddy. My daddy is going to take care of me. gonna take care of me and there's nothing wrong with that. I wish some of y'all had good days like I have a good day. <laughs> but I told them not too long ago, I said, uh-huh, with that little bit of retirement check and you, we gonna be all right. <laughs> so my dad's gonna take care of me. Um, dead right. But again, it's uh, for all of the duties and things that they are requiring us. But my take on it is this. Every year, when colleges and universities send other students out, what are they looking for? Yeah. A job. When you old, it's time to go. When you know it. Give that younger person an opportunity to begin their career. My children that I have over here that are in the school system, had someone not left, they wouldn't have that position or, the, or that job here in Hull County. So I want to leave so that they can have others. And I have many, many more students that are actually teaching uh, in Hull County school system right now. One of my students, <laughs> we were at a funeral, and he walked up to me and he said, it's all your fault. That's all he said. It's all your fault. I thought about that thing for a moment, and then I got it really, really excited because I knew what was all my fault. It was all my fault that he is now a teacher. And when I, you know, it just made me really, really happy and excited because all that our children needed was love, the attention that they so deserved and that they received because I wanted them to have it. My parents gave me that, so all I knew was to reciprocate, you know, kind of give that back. Well, the only difference now, the salary. Desmond told you, back when I started in 89, or 88 actually, $18,000, that's a change. Teachers now have a starting salary of about $35,000. That's not the best, but it is better. But it should be more. I was talking to another teacher who said, huh? that's all? In my state, our teachers start off with $60,000. So you know I feel real crunchy right about then. <laughs> But it was all right, it's gonna be okay. I'm a firm believer, a great veteran teacher is needed as a mentor to all the others. Back in the day, we called them ILBTs, Initially Licensed Beginning Teacher. Now they chop that all off and call it just BTs, they are beginning teachers. So as I vacate the premises, I pass it on to whomever it is that desires to become that teacher. What did I use? How did I stay so long? Or why? First of all, I love my job. I still love my job. And I will probably always have within me that need to teach. Because that's something that I've always done. But what I used with my children was a sense of humor. If I thought it was funny or could make it funny, I laughed. We did more laughing because it made sense. It's better to laugh and enjoy it than to cry, pout, or be in despair. More prayer. 
Lord, did I pray. I prayed so much sometimes that my students picked up on it. And I would hear them, Lord, help us. <laughs> because I would say all the time, Lord, did you hear that? Lord, help them. And I could just hear it. And I even had a student this year. He stayed out one day out of school. And I was like, where were you? I needed you. He said, what? What happened? I said, you weren't here to help me pray. <laughs> he said, oh, I'm so sorry. I won't do it again. I'll be here. <laughs> and so he's always, he was always there. And one day something was going on in the classroom. He said, Lord, help us. <laughs> I said, see, that's why. It's my baby. That's my baby. So he knew. I did my best in showing my students respect and showing them how to become leaders. I didn't want them to be a follower. Now I do know and understand that not every person is going to be a great leader. But if you learn how to become a leader, you will do better in your following. So I taught my students that a leader is one who knows the way, who goes the way, shows the way. You're a great leader. And I admonish all of you to be selective. If you don't have your educational whatever's intact, I admonish you to be selective in your decisions. And if you are working in your chosen careers, to be happy in it and to know that you too will be able to one day stand where I am in the seat of I can retire now, I'm done, I'm good, and say that I appreciate all that I was able to work up to. And I'm happy, I'm excited about the fact that I can retire and sleep at least till 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> happy about that. 5.30 comes early Monday through Friday. But after December, my actual retirement date is going to register as January 1st, 19, or oh, 19, January 1st, 2018. Um, but I do know that December will be out of school, so I just kind of called it that way for January. Um, unless I see some more money in my check. If I see some more money in my check, Wanda, it's going to be on and popping. <laughs> but again, to all of you, I appreciate you. My godson back there, so wonderful to see my baby back there. Yeah. Um, just graduated from college, too. Yeah. Uh, to all of my family, Friends, my students, you know I love you guys a whole lot. But to every person in this room right now, I appreciate you. Because at some point, you've had an impact on my life or I've had an impact upon you. And if there was something that I've said and done to allow you to get to where you are right now, then I'm grateful for that. And for those of you who said something to me to get me further along the way, I am indeed grateful for that as well. To uh, Desmond again, I love you so much and I'm proud of you. Uh, my son is an author, y'all. <laughs> my son is an author. Wrote his own book. Mama still has to read it. A little delayed there, but uh, my daddy said I was special. <laughs> Don't read it. Uh, to my mom and my dad, always. There is nobody more important. When I say I have to take care of you, that's what I mean. And I believe everybody understands that. They know. If I don't have my mom and dad taken care of, they got to wait. Everybody got to wait. Because they, they don't have it like that. So you all, I love you dearly. My brothers and my sisters, y'all next in line. Because right, right, right. you know I got you too. Um, and my nieces and nephews who are my children as well. <laughs> Thank you. Ain't 
know. I love you dearly. And my other sisters and my brother, see, because we don't do a whole lot of their in-law stuff at our house, so they already know my sisters, Gina and Karen over there, Zap back there, my brother. We just, that's how we are. If you go to our house on Sundays, you would think something happened every Sunday. Because there's so many cars in the yard. Right. But that's just because we're always there together. Family. Mm -hmm. And family means everything. Um, right. So anybody, my Greensboro, Eden, Reesville family. All right. There's nobody like you guys. Nobody. Nobody. I love you guys so, so much. Man, that's a two and a half hour drive. And my family right here, them camp family, I'm telling them camp people right there. Nobody like you either. Love you from Thomas family. And, and see, my cousin, Jane, <laughs> yeah, well, there's, that's her boy. So we're going to keep passing them on the age. Yeah. Yeah, it's him. <laughs> you didn't know? <clears throat> so, and again, to all of my coworkers, much, much love. I want to join the ranks, friends. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mary Beth, I told you to come on. <laughs> Two more. Okay. Corliss, you already done your thing. I told you. I'm still waiting on, you know what I'm waiting on? So we, oh God. Yeah. Miss Young, I don't know what you gonna do, but, uh, you know, whenever you feel like it, just, you join us. Belinda says she's coming out next year. So, to all of you again, and then to my better half. Yeah. <laughs> Francis Lego, I love you. <laughs> and I'm so glad that he's better. Yeah. Better. I love it. I too. thought <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. I said it this way. I didn't know that a kidney could be such a Deadly thing, you, you know. And I watched him. I watched him happy, and I watched him, you know, just watched him. But then when I thought, because he told me, he, he warned me, he said, my doctor said, or my counselor said, pack your bags, because now that I'm on the kidney list, they can call me anytime. I'm like, okay, I'll be ready. You know, I'm packing them this summer. I'll be ready for you to have your surgery this summer. Man, how about as soon as we got out of school, December 18th? They called him on December 19th, and by December 20th, he was with a new kid. Oh, yes. So he's good now. I had to keep up. Wait, wait. Whew. I had to keep up with him now. So I'm very, very thankful that he's lot better. Well, uh, to all of you who pushed hard to do the work that Desmond put forth on your hands, thank you. Because I know my son, and he was trying to get things done from afar. Um, so I appreciate whomever you were that pitched in to help take care of business uh, for today. I appreciate you. I love you much. And may God bless all of you. Let me do it.